Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is currently Wednesday, October 3rd, 2012, and I did forget to pay rent. Oh, if I get it paid tomorrow, I don't suffer the $25 fee. I wind up paying a lot. <laughs> I should get one month free at the end of every year for all the accumulated $25 fees. I'll negotiate with the landlord soon. And very exciting news, today kicks off Optober, or as I wanted to call it, Playtober. Even though Playtober sounds not smooth at all, let's talk about what those two mergerisms mean. I'm get who? Enough. It's my friend Rob, but I'm going to pretend it's an extremely attractive female who's like, please, Sean, please don't do the show. Please. Pay more attention to me. Anything to pay more attention to me, I'll do. In reality, it says, how'd your draft go? But we can pretend, can't we? I will scoot Felicity aside. And talk about all the awesomeness that's going to be going on in the month of October. Um, first of all, uh, in the month of October, I'm going to be doing some changing in the Day 9 Daily, where I'm going to be doing a lot more playing and a lot less straight analysis. Certainly I'll be doing that, but for two reasons I want to step into the playing sphere. For one, um, it's just a different way to get um, access to learning, right? Like seeing what would happen on my end and seeing how I can talk about what I was thinking while I was playing and that sort of thing, demonstrating. Um, and also, and this is the bigger reason, it's really fun to have an excuse to play Heart of the Swarm. So I'm going to utilize that excuse throughout the month of October as often as possible. In light of that, uh, we're going to be kicking off today a new Newbie Tuesday series about optimizing a build order. Hence, October! Yeah. It'll be going on for four weeks. Uh, it'll be every Tuesday, with the exception of today is Wednesday. Because yesterday I was in San Francisco, I actually got up this morning and drove back. Hence why my hair is a little bedraggled. I've been in a car for six hours, but damn it, the show will happen! Yes! So, in this optimization daily, here's the basic concept we're going to be working with. Very regularly, you'll have an idea, or a build order, or a strategy, or a tactic, whatever you want to call it for whatever situation you're in, and you simply want to do it better. You want to try to uh, do that attack faster in a larger number, or do two attacks instead of one, all those things. The question is, how do you go about optimizing that build order. Um, specifically, I'm thinking of some of those GSL players where you'll get a first person perspective and you'll see them clicking furiously. You'll see everything lining up magnificently and you can appreciate how beautiful it is, but it's hard to perform how beautiful it is. And I think that you should do that. So we'll talk about a process to do that in today's daily. Of course, the presidential debates between Mitt Romney and Barack Obama are going on right now. And right now, we have two and a half thousand viewers. We just started the daily. And I'm hoping that we can surpass the presidential debate numbers in the next hour and 15 minutes, give or take. It's an ambitious goal, but I believe in us. Fantastic. Also, if any of you would like to begin thinking of what type of food I should get after the daily, I don't have any groceries in the house. I'm thinking ramen or Ethiopian. Those are really high on the list right now. Oh God, I hope I don't get distracted by that. Oh, that feels so good thinking about it. Okay, no. Let's do the Newbie Tuesday topic today, optimization. And for the next four weeks, three weeks, four weeks, for the next three episodes, however many weeks you want to consider that to be, we're going to be exploring how to optimize and how to make things better. Let me get all philosophical on you for a moment. It's very easy with a lot of professions to watch what they're doing and to think that the joyful moment must be blah, when that's not really where they derive the joy from. I'm going to take something like StarCraft to begin with. Oh my gosh, when that amazing micro moment happened, that must be the most joy-filling activity for that player. But that's the most joy-filling activity for the observer, not necessarily from the playing side of things. 
Or I remember I was reading a Kitchen Confidential where a chef talks about that the real joy is not from having the most delicious dish to deliver to a, a, a patron. Instead, it's to have eight people crammed in a small kitchen, each doing specialized tasks, but doing them very, very well. Doing everything actually perfectly, even though it's extremely difficult. And at the end of the day to say, oh my God, we served a thousand dishes today and didn't drop the ball once. And it's that sort of execution that makes optimizing of a build order just ugh, oh, my favorite thing in the universe. I love the art of optimizing build orders for a couple of reasons. Let's begin with the two not so exciting reasons first and then finish with the most exciting of all. So first of all, it, um, it steps away from the competitive. There's no worry about winning or losing. You can actually just sort of get better. And it's kind of like playing SimCity, honestly. Some of my favorite moments in StarCraft are just arranging my base. It's not even about winning or losing. It's not about having the best micro. It's about, ooh, look at a, I can plant a pylon here, and I can fit all these buildings over here. Ah! It's actually quite joyful if you take the time to think about it when you're optimizing a build order. The second one is it's a fun feeling when you feel like you've cheated. When you feel like, oh my god, I got that expansion up a full minute earlier. It's fun, that notion of improvement without the need to, um, to have to win. To when you really feel like you're getting better without having that need to kill someone else or to overcome any adversity. You're just doing it in your own spare time. And last, and in my eyes most importantly, when things line up, I... I almost giggle at my computer. I get all squeamish. Like, ah, ah, front row concert. Justin Bieber, 12-year-old girl, giggle, smittenness when things just line up perfectly. When I send that SCV out, and right when I'm getting ready to build the factory, I'm at 148 minerals, just getting up to 152 to be able to build that barracks. Bam! That, that, that feeling of having everything line up is far and away like the deepest pleasure I receive in playing StarCraft when everything is just com really, really nicely timed economically and all that stuff. So we're going to be stepping into that world today. How do we optimize ourselves a build in this Newbie 2 to Stay series? Um, even experts will use similar methods to what I'm talking about. Um, it's just a general way to get better at your build order, ignoring the other player entirely. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off, we're going to discuss the process of optimizing, that we're going to see the little outline I have, then we're going to look at a game that one of you wonderful folks submitted to me, in this case it is Vega Nova uh, submitted, and then we're going to be performing the act of optimizing live on air and discussing it. So first, whew, where is it, I and benchmarking sheet yes okay cool and I'm almost ready and here it is BAM here's the refinement process that I have listed out as the start and the loop how we start off uh, beginning with some build order that we have and then this refinement loop that we're gonna go through I will note it is not an A to B process. In fact, I mean, most things in the universe are not, especially in terms of a skill-based activity. But two, with your build order, you're gonna refine in a certain way, and they're gonna be like, all right, let me make an adjustment. Come back and refine it. Come back and refine it. And come back and refine it. And that's why I call it the loop there. But let's just begin with the basic outline. How are we gonna refine a build? What are we gonna be using through the month of October to optimize our builds? First the start, we're going to come up with an idea for our build. We don't care if it is from watching the GSL and stealing it. Maybe it's something you came up, up, uh, up with on your own. Maybe you saw a friend do it. That's fine. First you get your idea. And then what I want you to do is just wing it a couple times so that way you can get warmed up and get a feel for it. Then we're going to do something called recording benchmarks where we're actually going to list off when things are happening so we can see whether we're getting better or getting worse. Once we have this set up, we have a build that we want to start improving and then we're going to begin the loop. We begin with our buildings 
and there's this there's this strat that I have called order refine compare add. <gasps> It's called the ORCA method, and I hate acronyms, but I'm gonna use that because it's easy to remember. The ORCA acronym. We order what things we're gonna do it in, we refine it, we get it really crisp and pretty and clean. We compare it. Are we doing better or are we doing worse than we were before? And then we try to add stuff if we really uh, have some extra cash hanging around. But again, as, as you'll uh, see in many previous Newbie Tuesdays, we focus on this building's stuff first. And after we have a sense of whether things are going well or not with our buildings, then we're going to step into unit optimization with our build order. What uh, can I die to? Am I making it up the fence? Cutting units. Can we remove some of those units? And then we're going to go back to our Orca thing, in particular, trying to add more buildings. This is intended to be a really quick outline of everything I'm going to be talking about. If you feel like, oh, I, I missed that, don't worry, we're going to go into an extensive depth. All you have to remember is ORCA, Order, Refine, Compare, Add. I hate that I have an acronym, but it's so catchy. Ah, Let's stick with it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, uh, come back to the beginning where we say to ourselves, let's come up with an idea. We want to get creative, we want to actually come up with a build order, and I actually have this uh, somewhat extended list, which is the same list, but it just has a couple more bullet points on it, so that way we can really expand it out, just in case some of you are thinking of looking ahead, absolutely not. First, we want to have a start. We want to be creative. This is where you really get to have the fun, the freedom uh, of, your, of your play where you get to come up with ideas. When I say come up with an idea, make sure you have goals and next steps to your idea. We're gonna be, as an example today, optimizing a two base rush build. Nothing too fancy, nothing too complicated. But again, we wanna come back and we wanna just make sure we have goals and next steps. Like, once I do this attack with the Hellions, I'm gonna follow it up with some barracks. And once I do this, I'm gonna follow it up with a third base. Don't just say something like, Hellion drops kick ass. <laughs> Want to have a little bit more about like goals and next steps, when attacks happen, when the expansions happen. Then we have this wing it a couple of times. This is so you can warm up and you have a feel for when things are going well, when things are going poorly. Perhaps um, you'll see when losses occur. You'll feel... Um, when you'll get supply blocked, when you'll forget SCVs. I just want you to have some wingingness under your belt. And the last important piece to this puzzle is we record some times and numbers. So how are we gonna do this? We're actually gonna watch Vega Nova do this build order with the sound, oh damn it, with the sound on. And I'll tell you right off the bat that Vega Nova is going to be doing a pretty fast Hellion uh, expand build, and he's going to be following it up with a Hellion Marauder push. This is a very common push that happens around 10 minutes, generally. We have so many Hellions that we're not that worried about Lings. We have so many Marauders, we're not that worried about Roaches. Spines and Banelings, we kind of clean up with control and other things. So that's about it. Uh, for the plan. I don't want to overcomplicate it too much, but what I want to actually come to, um, here's my benchmarking sheet, excellent. Let's watch this game at times eight speed, and I'll describe it <laughs> at times two speed. Veganova begins by walling himself in with a barracks, takes himself an early gas geyser, says some things like damn you and omg, before building a small amount of marines to clean up this mess of an extractor. Uh, that he has. In the meantime, he pulls back to building his factory and reactor while he takes an early expansion. You're seeing the somewhat of the similar structure of what the pros will do in this matchup. Really fast double Hellion production with a fast base, with the one exception being that this supply depot that is just now wrapping on up, you can see it even has some of its armor still about to pop down. Normally pros will have that done a little bit earlier, but either way, BAM! Hellion production. Vega Nova will then follow it up by trying to build STEM, many tech labs, begin getting marauders, excellent, perhaps even some combat shield, yeah, 
He's building SUVs from both these expansions. He builds a third barracks to be able to get a reactor. Hellions in the middle of the map do some of their classic, infamous roasting. And as he uses these third uh, barracks to build himself marines, marauders, and of course more Hellions, Vega Nova is feeling prepped and ready to do a big-ass attack, which begins at the 9 minute and 30 second mark. He gets his concussive shell as he's moving out. He doesn't even have these second geysers. He's just churning out with these basic units. And a little bit after the 10 minute mark, Vega Nova gets ready to spike up into the main base. He scans, he sees lings and roaches. And he goes for it. Killing it all off. Mr. Miyagi. Pretty easy build. And we get it. Slip Slip says GG. Thug Snap. Let's recap that build. Hellions to control space while we get an expansion. And follow it up with Marine Hellion Marauder Pressure. Cool. Great. Excellent. That's actually quite easy, right? We don't need extremely complicated lists out at this point in time. We just have a basic build order. Um, where did my train of thought go? Oh my god, the train of thought escaped. That's right. The reason I chose this as the first week of October um, is because I wanted to create this um, sense that even with simple builds, there are ways to optimize it to make it better. A lot of times when people think of an optimized build order, they're either thinking that it's completely basic to optimize it, Something like, oh yeah, two racks bunker. Well, you build two racks, and then you kill them with a bunker. <laughs> and they laugh with their bras. Right? It seems either too easy, or it seems too complicated. It seems something like the builds that um, Fanatics Oz does in PvZ, that have like three base on one gate with one stalker to defend. It feels too hard. And what I assure you is that there is somewhere in the middle where literally everything lies. It's possible to optimize, there's lots of avenues to do it, and there's plenty of skill to be had. So, ugh, what step are we in this process? I'm going to come back to this how we want to optimize a build thing. We're still at the start. Perhaps you watched GSL. Perhaps you're Vega Nova and you just played this game. You want to come up with your idea. Okay, we did it a couple times. We just saw this there. Now what we want to do is record benchmarks. And this is a really important uh, phase to this whole process. And it's not actually difficult. It doesn't take much time. And I swear to God, if you take two minutes to do this every once in a while, you will get like 30 times as much growth in your StarCraft II play. It helps so much I can't tell you it's so easy to go into rage mode and to just be like I lost click 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 fine match fine match I don't want you to do that I want you to actually record these benchmarks this game again Vega Nova played in a multiplayer game you don't have to do that when you record benchmarks you can play single player and then afterward record those benchmarks the important thing is that we have this benchmarking sheet. This is how I generally do my setup. When did it happen? What the hell happened? What are the numbers associated with it? So let's go ahead and do some of this. I'm gonna be needlessly pedantic at the start for um, two reasons. One, because it's the example and why not be needlessly pedantic in week one? And two, I like the word pedantic. Cool. So, what do we record? What the hell do we record in this thing? Whatever is of note. So, for instance, uh, refinery started at 2.30. Uh, okay, I'll just do this. Uh, refinery starts. And now when I have numbers, you might say, what do I mean by that? I mean in this unit tab. 14 SCV. That's what you're recording. If you want, you can record buildings, like one command center, one racks, that sort of thing. As much as you want to record. But just make sure that you're recording some things of note. SCV ready. 
There's the LOL damn you from Vega Nova. What I'm going to record is when my factory finishes and when my command center starts. Because those seem pretty damn integral to the build. So when is my factory finished? Uh, well, this this bad boy got started at... Okay, so this is 5.05. This is 8 seconds in. I will call this command center at 5 minutes. I don't need to be... I don't need to do, like, 4.57. No, I'm not going to do anything that... I'm not going to be that pedantic. But we have expo starts. And what's my count at... Uh, five minutes. Well, let's back up and find out. 20 SCVs and three Marines. I don't care about mules. 20 SCV, three Marines. Nice. And it also seems like around five minutes, 5.05. My factory can start building Hellions. So I have 5.45 here. 5.45 Hellions start. 22 SCVs, 3 Marines. You'll notice that this is pretty damn easy to extract from a replay, from yourself, obviously, but it's also pretty easy to extract from GSL games or from MLGs. I know this for a fact because this is what I have done for 14 years. <laughs> I guess it's more like 14 and a half now, right? I have do, done benchmarking in StarCraft for a really long time, and you can get pretty creative with it. Hell, say if you're watching GSL and you can't even figure out, you might be able to do something like 20 to 24 SCVs. Something like that. You can make ranges for yourself. All good in the hood. So I like to record when things finish and when units start. This is just something I generally do. And a lot of times, okay, so here's something. Two barracks done at 631. 630. Second rack's done. And let's get some numbers with this. I'm going to do something a little bit more creative. Three marine, two hellion. I'm also going to put some buildings. Two racks, one factory. There's this other barracks building. I might even record that. Uh, Stim just started. So I, I can feel free to record these sorts of things where um, I'll put 2.5 racks for the constructing one, one factory, one uh, tech lab. I'll put one tech because TL is Team Liquid, not tech lab. One reactor. See, I'm, I'm not listing everything. I'm listing enough for me. And these benchmarks are against myself. Now, I'll note that I could record things like when this reactor finishes. Here's another great benchmarking technique. I'm just going to pick a random time. Let's do 8.15. Why not? It could be any time. Just pick a time. 8.15. 8.15. What's happening? Random moment. And let's find out how we're doing at 8.15. I'll stop right now and answer the immediate question, why the hell do we care about 8.15? We're trying to create benchmarks for ourselves. So that way, if I play a game later, pause it at 8.15, I can say, wow, in my new game, I had five more Marauders and two more SCVs. I am definitively playing better. So for this purpose, I will do that. 31 SCV, uh, five Marines, five Hellions. How am I doing building wise? Three racks, one factory. Three racks, one factory, two tech labs, two reactors. Great. You don't have to record the buildings. Research. We have these researches done. I haven't recorded any of the research at all. Oopsie daisies, it looks like this guy moved out to attack at around 9.30. Alright, fantastic. At 9.30, what did he have? I do want to get these numbers down. Attack begins. 37 SCV. 
Let's see here, 13 Marines, three Marauders, even though Marauder is spelled M-A-R-A-U, M-A-R-A-U, right there. I'm still gonna spell it M-A-U-R, just for my notes. Seven Hellion. And then we had some buildings, I don't really, I don't really care. I really don't give a damn. Research and then he moves out and just and then he just kills the guy all right fantastic and i'll stop at 11. we're about to win this game i mean all of you saw it or if you tuned in late <laughs> believe it or not vega nova wins this game guy leaves we'll still go ahead and get ourselves a benchmark 47 scv 15 marines 7 marauders 10 hellions one of the reasons why I'm listing this, but hesitant about it, is that some of my units have died. So for instance, if I played a game and I had more Marines than this at 11 minutes, but there'd been no attack, it doesn't really mean anything per se. However, it's still useful to write these things down. Because what if you're playing a game and at 11 minutes you have 42 SCVs? You're gonna be like, why the hell do I have fewer SCVs? Marking sheet for Hellion Marauder Push. Cool. Now we have something that we can begin to work with. So when we come back, where's my other thing? Uh, yeah. We've just done the start. We've come up with an idea. We've winged it. And we've just gotten done recording this list of benchmarks here. When we come back, we're going to start actually playing and optimizing, stepping into this refinement loop by beginning with the buildings and using the ORCA method. The order, refine, compare, add. We'll see you in two short minutes to continue this week one.